And we're back for the commentary section of the show. If you missed the main show, make sure you go back and watch that first. It might make a little bit more sense. So the, the main show today was all about shooting real estate using a variety of techniques with the camera shooting stills and video. And the most important thing is the variable aperture that is built into this lens. It gives you a smooth aperture closing on this Leica 12 to 60 instead of a stepped one when it's in auto mode. So if you haven't seen this, seen that, go back and watch the previous video. Uh, questions. This is the Q&A part of the show. So let's see what is flying up here in the Q&A. Some of these we've already addressed that were about uh, the topic we had on just a moment ago, but some of them aren't. So that's what we're going to do now. Jakartens says, how do you turn off IBIS, that's the in-body image stabilization, on the GH5? That depends on what lens you've got. Sometimes there's a switch right on the lens, like this one has right here. I don't have a close-up camera here today, sorry, but IBIS on, off, on, off, on, off. But you can also do this in software. So let's plug this thing in, and I'll show you where that setting is in the camera. So waiting for that to sync up to my screen, syncing up to the screen, syncing up to the... Are you going to sync today? Are you going to show up? Did I plug this in all the way? I did. Are we going to... Apparently we're not. Apparently we're not showing... Oh, I know why. Let's do that. Come on, show up. There she is. All right. So, fabulous view that you're getting, wrong one, fabulous view that you're getting here today. Uh, in-body image stabilization. So we go into the menu and let's see here. It's probably under, is it this one? Oh, is it this one or is the custom C? I don't know. Let's see here. This is one of those where I just don't remember where she is. Mm-hmm, it's probably under here. Exposure, focus, shutter, release, operation. Does that sound like an operation thing? Lens, others, sounds like an others thing. Lens position resume. Nope, that's not it. All right, well, now we got to dig through here because I really don't know. <sighs> I swear, it needs to search. You know what it needs is voice activated. Just bring it up and say, camera, turn off, or at least find me the menu for image stabilization. Probably have scrolled past it already, and some of you are going, you went past it, you idiot. God, I think I might have. Um, is it under, it's not under the video setting. Hold on. I know I've got it set up into one of my custom settings. Let's just do that, because that's where I've got it set up. I, although I suppose you really want to know where it is, I probably should find the actual one. So there's the one that we're looking for. It's called Stabilizer. Now in, let's see, this we've got, so I guess it knows that it's got a lens on there that has a switch, because I don't have an off function on here. So it's allowing normal or panning only. Panning would be a, a for if you're just doing a panning shot like this and you want to keep stabilizing on. Um, you can tell I still got the spot meter enabled. <laughs> the spot meter is enabled. So that's that setting, but you want to know where it is in the main menu. So let's go back and find it. It's got to be in here somewhere. Uh, bracket, my record. Oh, stabilizer. No, that's my custom one. Sorry. That's again, I have it set up under my custom settings. So do save it there. Um, let's go back to the very top of this and try this again. What's it going to do? Beep, uh, headphone economy monitor, you know, sensor USB. No, TV connector, activate double shot function. No, no, machine reset one. No, okay, so it has to be under here. Uh, we're going to start at the top. Focus, it's not going to be in focus, but we're going to try there anyway. Shutter, quick F, that's me reading out loud, by the way, in case you were wondering. Um, it's not in there either. Oh, God. Maybe it is under the individual ones. Now I can understand why you're asking. Where the heck is it? Filter settings? You know, Oops, no, oh no, it wouldn't be here. Maybe it's here. There we go. Let's try this one. So the camera setting, we're in camera, still photo mode right now. Classical meter, I just went to red ISO, ISO minimum. Stabilizer, there it is. Whew, man, that took long enough for me to find. I guess you have different stabilizing options if you're in still or video mode. So I guess this makes sense. Sorry. So there's the stabilizer function. Again, we go into there, you've got operation mode, you've got, uh, again, so full stabilization or panning only. If we hit the display button, does it bring up? It doesn't. Interesting. It does not bring up a, a little help menu to tell me which one is which, but anyway, that's full stabilizing, that's for panning. So it's only stabilizing in vertical motion, right? It's stabilizing vertically so that you can do a pan. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Otherwise, if it was trying to stabilize, if you're doing a pan and it's set to this type of stabilization, you could get jumps. I'm doing this I'm deliberately doing this, but you could get jumps in it as it tries to stabilize that uh, motion. So this is where you want to be if you're doing pans. And then you got e-stabilization. This is important, actually. If you're doing video, e-stabilization on or off is an important thing to know because you will be getting, it's basically a software-based stabilization. Uh, I would say it's worth trying both to see what you prefer. I have found that I like the, uh, like leaving it off. I like the just the optical stabilization, leave the e-stabilization off. Now, if I switch the camera into video mode, so that I've just rotated the dial on top of the camera, um, which 
is not sinking out. Why isn't it sinking out? I, oh, because it's in 60p mode. That's why this my converter can't handle the 60p. Let me get it out of 60p. That's why it wasn't syncing earlier. So let's go to, I'll just go to uh, HD 8-bit, 60p, 8-bit, 30p. There we go. Now I think it'll sync up with my extra. There we go. Now it's synced up to the switcher. Let's get the exposure down a little bit so it's not this huge bright thing on the screen. Bring that back. And now when I go back into the creative movie mode and under here I should find stabilizing again. Did I pass it? Secret screen. So it's not even in here now. I'm so confused. Where is it? So we're in movie mode. Stabilizer. And now it's showing up there. I'm, that is bizarre. Anyway, so that's where it is. E-stabilization video on or off. And the stabilization, the main stabilization is now only controlled by the lens. Because I can't switch between the panning only. It's video, so I guess it just knows you're going to be panning and it doesn't do that. Um, but so that's why it says it can't be set. But now I'm relying on the switch on the side of the camera. So long-winded answer. Took me a while to find it, but it is under that camera menu. There you go. Hopefully that was marginally <laughs> useful. <laughs> uh, Scorgasm says, just recently found out what a tilt shift lens can do. Super fun, right? And saw some amazing videos using it. Is there one for the GH5 or do you just need to get an adapter? I don't believe there are any native micro four thirds tilt, tilt shift lenses, but let's, let's find out. Oops, wrong button. Let us find out. Let us ask the Google tilt shift lens micro four thirds. Safari can't open the page. Thank you, Google. Am I on the internets? I'm on the internets. What the heck? Go to google.com? No. Oh, yes. Okay. Let's try that again. Tilt shift lens micro four thirds. And let's see what the survey says. Uh, okay. Lens baby's got one. That's not real. Um, that's kind of a weird, like, not a real true tilt shift. Um, Samyang, is this? Ooh, that looks like it could be. Samyang makes a lot of micro four thirds stuff. Wide angle tilt shift prime lens. This is a aperture from 3 to 5, 3.5 to 22, 24 millimeter equivalent. That's for Nikon, though. Um, okay, I don't know why that came up there on the search results. Wow, wow. Rokinon, let's see, maybe that is. Oh, there we go, Rokinon, 24 mil, four Olympus micro four thirds. Oh, this is four thirds, not micro four thirds, which is a different mount, so nope. Mm -hmm. Nate, oh, here we go, look at this, first article, DP review, native micro four thirds tilt shift lens found Excellent. I was over at 43 Rumors. Someone posted a link for the Zentar 50 mil F2 tilt shift with a micro four thirds mount for $200. I presume it's Russian given that it has Cyrillic lettering on the lens cap. Awesome. Let's see if this link actually takes us to it. This could be a very old auction. That's a tilt shift lens? All right. If they say so, but that's something old, no longer in production, I would imagine. Hmm. Still hoping, still hoping. Let's go back here. Uh, here's another surprise new 15 mil shift lens for Micro Four Thirds. This is back to 2012. Um, the Colonies reports the German company Big Photo will announce a reporting that a, an, annou an announcement that an announcement is coming. Tilt shift from Got Shot Camera California. Click here to see. There's another one. Another eBay link. Oh, it's that same lens. <laughs> okay, well, this is apparently is to be available. Okay. Go away. So Pentax 50 mil F2 shift lens for Olympus Pen Micro Four Thirds. Okay. There you go. Well, there's one, Fotex. Oh, Fotex, I know those guys. How very cool. Okay, so there's an option for you. Or of course you can use an adapter as well, but, um, but there you go. And there might be others. That's just a quick Google search. I have not ever worked with one. And if you're watching this going, that's really interesting. What the hell is a tilt shift lens for? Tilt shift lens is designed to mimic what you could do or what you can do with a um, a rangefinder camera, which would be like a 4x5 camera where you've got a film plate and a lens plate. And the lens plate can move independently of the film plate. So you can tilt it forward backwards, shift it up and down, left and right. The reason you would do this is by doing that, you distort the image that's coming in and hitting the film plate. And so you can correct for distortion that happens when you tilt the camera up. So let's say you're taking a picture of a building, you tilt up, what happens to the building? It does this, right? So you fix it, you tilt the lens the opposite direction, straighten out the lens plane, basically you put the lens plane even with the subject and your building suddenly has straight lines. Crazy cool, it's like, this is awesome stuff. And then somewhere along the way, someone figured out, and I wanna give credit to Vincent LaFerre because he did a bunch of stuff around this, although I don't know if he was the first, but he certainly made it uh, popular. 
By doing this and photographing a normal scene, especially from up in the air, something like an airport or a train station or something like that, it looked like a model train set. Everything became miniaturized because in our brain, when we see something that's in focus and then immediately something out of focus on the other side of it, we think it has to be tiny. This is macro photography. It's amazing what our brains are trained to think. And so when you see a real world situation that way, your brain goes, it must be a model train set. And then you go, wait, it's not. Oh, that's so cool. And if you shoot video that way, that's crazy cool. Then you get this like animated movie. Just search on Google for tilt shift movies. You'll find all kinds of crazy cool stuff. Um, so that's, that's what the lens is designed for and then what you can do with it. So they're a lot of fun. They can be quite a lot of fun. Joshua says, I have the Lumix 14 to 140 version 2, and I just tested it. It has the stepless aperture too. Really? Excellent. Oh, the version 2, so that's a new one. Super. Thank you, Joshua, for sharing that with us. Like I said, I don't know whether the lenses this is in. I just know that it was in here. That is awesome. Very good. Uh, Jakartan says, thanks, but can you set the IBIS completely off? Well, yeah, that's... that's. I This lens has it on the switch on the side, so that's where it turns off. If you have a lens... If I take the lens off, actually, we should... C, let me make sure before I do this. Yeah. So now that the lens is off, when I go open up my IBIS control, you see now I have, oops, now I have an off. Oh, come back here. Where are we? There. No. Oh, now I lost it. Where'd it go? I'm using the wrong dials. There we go. Now I have the off at the top there, right? So I can go up there and go off, and that turns it off completely. So it just depends. What shows up here will depend on what lens you have and what mood you are in. Oh, so that's how you turn it off completely. Put my lens back on here before a bunch of gremlins decide to crawl in, make a nest inside of my camera. Okay, that was Jakarta's question. Ooh, no other questions came up. Excellent. Well, I make, I mean, not excellent, but that makes it uh, easy and it means I can get out of here on time. Uh, let's see, Trevor, definitely buy a Nikon and Canon for the premium lens. They are quite difficult to engineer. The optics and design need to be first rate or the results will be terrible. Sam Young is a budget option, but even that lens has flaws. It's not nearly as sharp as the Canon and Nikon lens. This has more chromatic aberration and has some build issues. Okay, well, there you go. Thank you, Trevor, for that, uh, that insight. That's awesome. So, yeah, good advice there. If you're really looking for quality, buy a Canon or Nikon tilt shift lens and an adapter to make it fit onto your micro four thirds. If you're just looking for a budget one to have some fun, then looks like the uh, Sam Young is a, is a decent option. Uh, Remember, guys, if you want me to, to answer your question, make sure you put at photo Joseph in front. It does catch my attention. But uh, Alexandra, I see yours in here. You said, can you explain the high dynamic creative control mode? High dynamic creative control mode. You're just talking about the HDR mode? Is that what you mean? Just putting it into HDR? Tell me if that's what you mean. Uh, let, me see, let me go back to the beginning of the comments here, make sure there isn't anything that I missed. A little bit of a quieter. Actually, it's not a quieter show. There's a lot of people here today. Oh, excellent. There are a lot of you watching. You're just not being so noisy in the chat room. <laughs> Let's see, did I miss anything in here? Like this, right? Isn't this cool? Getting the chat thing up there. It's so awesome. Uh, let's see here, John. We got yours. Jakartans, we got yours. AP and TV, we address that. Joshua, uh, Jakartans. Okay, so Alexander, I'm just waiting for you to clarify, and then we're going to bail out of here. While I'm waiting for you to clarify, I'm going to take this opportunity to remind you that what you really need to spend your hard-earned money on is this. My GH5 training course, which is in full bloom, gh5training.com. We are in full production on this thing. We just uploaded, I just uploaded, a uh, sample, a couple sample videos for this, which are available now on the YouTubes. Or just go to that gh5training.com website, and you can see these videos. I'm not going to play it right now, but you can watch the two sample videos up there and see exactly what this training looks like so you know what it is you are spending your money on. So please give that a try. Alexander, I'm not seeing a follow-up question from you, so you may have to save that for another day to explain what you mean by high dynamic creative control mode because that's not, I don't really know what you mean. Um, if you're talking about HDR high dynamic range mode, we did a whole video on that. And just in case that's what you're looking for, we will link to that up here. Now you're saying never mind. <laughs> we will link that up here if you want to explore high dynamic range in the camera itself. We did a whole video on that. So We'll link to that here. So you'll have to come back and find that later or just search. You can find it. Photo Joseph HDR. You'll find it. Okay, guys, that's it. We're out of here. Take care of yourselves. Hey, it's a holiday weekend here in the US of A. So that means Monday, I ain't going to be here. Monday, I will be busy getting sunburnt and barbecuing meat. Good. It's my plan for Monday. Uh, Tuesday, we'll be here with the Q&A show. I bumped the Q&A to Tuesday instead of just skipping it because the following week is WWDC. And I thought that I might be there, but I didn't get an invitation. So I guess I'm not going. 
So I will be here. So Monday will be a regular show. The following Monday. I guess it'll be a Q&A. I don't know. I'm kind of depressed. I was, I was hoping I was going to get an invitation because that would tell me that there was going to be something cool for photos happening. But I didn't get invitations, so that tells me that either there's nothing cool for photos happening or nobody that loves me anymore, which is entirely possible as well. I've been a little critical of Apple lately, and <laughs> that doesn't always go down well with Apple. So what are you going to do? Okay, that's it. I'm out of here. Have yourselves a fabulous holiday weekend, folks. We'll see you on Tuesday. Bye-bye.